take a very quick look at exactly at what is being proposed here. This, these are the terms of the Clean Power Plan to cut CO2 emissions from the power sector by 32% by 2030 compared with 2005 levels. The exact limit and rules will be set state by state. America, well, if we take a look, it currently has is in second place when it comes to total, uh, total emissions from fossil fuels burned in 2003. China very much out in the front to get some context. These are the six countries in the world who emit the most. But it is perhaps more interesting to take a look at it this way. Here are America's emissions compared to Brazil, which is a country with a similarly large population. And that tiny little dot that you can see there is Sweden, one of the most environmentally friendly countries in the world. So with that in mind, Tom, we do know that America has a huge problem, uh, that this is maybe just the first stage in trying to deal with it. Oh, this is definitely the first stage. There's a lot further to go, and America will, I suspect, go a lot further. As the President said, he's talking today about what the power sector will do. He's also doing things in the, uh, with vehicles, put emission standards up for vehicles so they're emitting less CO2. He'll have to deal with agriculture in due course as a big source of uh, carbon emissions. Uh, and he's said very clearly he's going to drive energy efficiency, drive the renewables forward. So I think what we're seeing is a very big shove uh, in the right direction. We'll deal with the, the, the politics in just a second, but let's kind of go a little bit deeper into the specifics. How ambitious are these targets and how do they uh, compare to other countries? Well, let's take a look. There is the US's uh, commitment here. The plan known as EU 2030, the plan adopted by the European Union in 2014, and at first glance they do look uh, reasonably similar, but... If we just highlight the key differences, as you can see, the EU is targeting all emissions, not just CO2. The target percentage is greater, 40 compared to 32%. The reference year, 1990, compared with 15 years later, 2005, of course, that means more gases being emitted in 2005. This makes the US target that much easier. And, of course, the policy only being imposed on national power plants in contrast to the EU's commitment, which is targeting all industry, which... When you consider that the US power plants account for only, as we were hearing the President say, around about 38% of America's CO2, then its targets are considerably less ambitious. But Tom, I suppose, given that the very first part of this graphic that we were showing you, showing America in second place, the fact that they're taking any action at all has to be welcomed. Well, it's really important that America's now set itself out to lead and to demonstrate leading by taking action. It's been a laggard and other countries have therefore been able to hide behind it. I think that shield is now removed. Uh, I suspect the Americans will find out what we've found out in Europe. It's actually a lot easier to get these apparently big targets than you think at first. Mm. I reckon that what we'll see if Hillary Clinton succeeds, uh, Obama, we'll see their uh, standards ratcheted up and they'll discover that actually uh, once you get going, then things tend to flow beyond there. There is, of course, another option in all of that, that it might not be a Democrat that follows, but, but a Republican. I mean... You know, many are calling move extremely political when the year before the general election is going to be forcing the issue to the forefront. Now, whereas the Democratic candidates have said that they will support it, of these, the 17 people running for the Republican nomination, well, this is how many of them have either out, uh, outright denied that climate change is real or have gone on the record saying that climate change science is questionable or perhaps subjective. Tom, I mean, it is something, it is noticeable that President Obama is only able to target this as he's heading for the exit door. Well, I think it's very important that he's doing it without the consent of Congress, as Congress has made it clear it would stop him doing anything. But I think he's set a trap for the Republicans. The public in America is quite clearly behind, as it is here, behind more vigorous action on climate change. I don't think it's an accident that he's made this announcement three days before all of those Republicans who've been deniers are going to stand up and outbid each other and to be even bigger deniers. Talk